to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. Welcome to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. I am your host, Mike Jokum. Joining me is Jess and joining the show for the first time, Dale Coin Racing Engineer Eric Cowden. Eric, how are you? I'm doing well, guys. How are you? We are we are doing pretty well. So I hope everything right now is is going well with you. So during this quarantine time as an engineer, how are you able to stay busy and, and stay focused on the well soon to be upcoming season now? Yeah, and we we really wanted to take this time to do as much prep as, as we can. So, I mean, obviously wherever we're at with a laptop and an internet connection, that's work for us. So <laughs> that can be, uh, that can be any, any form of, of, you know, working at home for our situation. But as, as a group, we, we felt like we needed this time to, you know, work as not work as far ahead as possible, but try to put effort into preparing for, uh, well, uh, for example, I, I did all of the, the race prep, tire strategy, um, uh, strategy review for Detroit, sent all of that information out, and then that race was canceled two days later. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes it ends up being busy work, but at, at the end of the day, we're, we're going through and trying to get uh, as much of the, the review and, and the, the work up front that we can get done as possible because not really knowing what schedule was coming um, what it was going to look like. We assumed it was going to be compressed. It was going to go into, you know, later into the year. So, you know, whatever we could do at this point, we were trying to just get that done, get it in the books and, and uh, get ourselves onto where we could react to whatever the new situation was going to be for us going forward. I love it. So tell us a little bit of background story. Like how did you get into motorsports? <laughs> uh, so this is, this is where I, I start telling stories and then suddenly in the midst of my, my stories, I realize I'm the old guy now <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm talking about the good old days. <laughs> so when I was, uh, I, I did uh, about a year of, of, uh, research for the Department of Defense between my undergraduate and graduate degree at uh, Argonne National Laboratories. And I realized very quickly that going into a windowless room in a basement and doing research for 10 hours a day and never seeing the sun, that wasn't going to work out for me. Um, so I ended up uh, uh, going on to get my master's degree at Virginia Tech uh, through connections that uh, my uh, the doctor that I was working for, working under doing the research, um, got me connected with the right people there. Um, so I was working through my master's and you know trying to keep a regular schedule of more than four hours of sleep. Um, I needed something to do, so I tried to take up golf. Well, that wasn't going very well. Uh, I'm on the back back nine of, of the Virginia Tech golf course, which is alongside their airport, and I hear this car going back and forth, like a, a motorcycle, high-pitched engine. And it was their Formula SA team um, testing on the runway. So I just literally dumped the clubs in a, in a pile of weeds, jumped the fence, and like that's how I basically got my first interaction with motorsports, other than being a fan watching IndyCar and Formula One uh, on, on TV all the time. So a couple weeks after that, uh, I started working with them. Uh, I went to my first IndyCar race at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Uh, I watched Mansell win the championship there at Nazareth, which kind of dates me right there. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> the qualifying got rained out. So everybody was changing, putting in their race motors. I actually uh, got to spend some time talking with Julian Robertson, who was obviously uh Rosenquist engineer at Ganassi. 
uh, at the time he had just come from F1 and he was going to be Michael Andretti's engineer the next season at Ganassi. Um, and it was just one of those conversations, like, how do I, how do I get into this? And he says, you just have to be persistent. You have to get in wherever you can. And then when you get the opportunity, you make the best of it. So <laughs> I got a, uh, a job with, uh, an IMSA GTS team, uh, Bricks Motorsports in Wixom, Michigan, uh, about a year later. Um, two weeks after I started, the chief engineer quit, and we had the the uh, January Daytona test in two weeks, and they said, well, here's your stopwatch, and here's your clipboard, again, dating myself, and uh, <laughs> let's see how you do. So uh, that was that was really sort of a trial by fire. That's how I ended up in in motorsports. Um, but I also learned very quickly the the the, uh, the following off season that we get to do this. This is a privileged sport, and the fact that we do it most of the time with other people's money because um, we won the championship and manufacturers championship for Oldsmobile, and unfortunately the funding went away. So I was looking for a job just as soon as I found the last one, it felt like. Um, and that's how I got hooked up with uh, the Tasman Indy Lights team. Awesome. Yeah, so that's <laughs> maybe one of the most random jumps from Department of Defense to IndyCar that I've heard, but I like it. That's, that's interesting. I mean, that's a heck of a difference, and I don't blame you for not wanting to be outside and in the sunshine at all and not doing golf <laughs> thank thank goodness the golf thing didn't take off exactly <laughs> yeah golf golf has never taken off for me i mean it's been years at this point since i played a round of golf because i just realized i'm so bad that it's not it's not even fun <laughs> to laugh at myself i'm that bad i would have well, i would have lost my clubs in the weeds even if there wasn't a race car near me <laughs> so i will ask a couple uh, Alex Pillow questions here because you are his engineer for 2020. You got yep. limited testing with Alex so far, but what do you think about your, your new rookie driver this year and, and how do you think he can do in uh, whatever the 2020 schedule ends up being? Well, I, I can't, I can't actually say enough about how impressed I am so far with Alex. Um, I think not even really just, you know, his experience on road courses, I think if anywhere where he was going to have a, an easy transition, Coda, I think, was an example of that, the open test. You know, unfortunately, the the limited running that we got uh, was was unfortunate because we didn't, we had a, obviously a large test program for a two-day event like that and really just ended up getting him comfortable in the car, comfortable with the formula, um, and just getting him as many laps as we could. We really didn't get through much of the program. But, you know, to see him, I think within, you know, the first two outings, suddenly he's P1. And obviously there's a lot going on with the track and the conditions. and But usually that sort of comfort level, you know, it, it, I think it shocked – I know it shocked me initially – but then, you know, we all sort of like, okay, well, let's just see how this goes. And, and you know, by the end of the day, we were like, okay, come on. Let's <laughs> we, we were actually looking to go quicker at the end of the day and, and with the traffic and the yellows and um, that, that just, you know, finishing P9, it was as surprisingly as it is, it was a disappointment for us as a group. Um, but it was great motivation for us going forward. Um, but that aside, like I said, I, I would have expected him to do well in that format. A couple of days later, we took him for his uh, rookie test at Texas Motor Speedway. And that is actually where I, I was the most impressed. Um, coming into a situation like that, never having been on an oval, uh, let alone a high-speed oval. Um, he was, you know, very methodical, um, 
very he, he understood um the levels that we were going to go through progress through with him coming up to speed um the, just the overall program was to get him comfortable make some ch- just basic changes so he could feel balance differences and you know by by the end of the day we were you know trimming the car out uh not uh, by no means qualifying trim like a race weekend but taking some downforce off, progressing, picking up speed, letting him make those, feel those changes. Um, you know, I, all of this is with the caveat that there's not another 20 cars out there. I, you know, I understand that, but some, sometimes you, you don't know what to expect. And when you go into it with a blank sheet of paper, like, uh, like this situation, I couldn't have been more impressed with how he just, took it step by step he gets it he got has a great feel for the car um he knows how to describe what he's feeling um you know i i I, again i say that with with tempered sort of enthusiasm because it's it's going to be a different beast when we go back there for the race weekend obviously a one-day event is a challenge it's going to be a challenge for a rookie so you know obviously our game plan is is really all about focusing on the race getting him every lap that we can possibly get him um, before the start of the race and, uh, you know, see, see how it goes. So with that being said, that, that leads right into my next question. And I saw Alex post a short video of some onboard footage from that Texas test. The Texas race from today is about uh, three and three weeks, four weeks away now. So yep. What are expectations for Texas? Do you temper them in any way because he doesn't have the seat time of seven or so races previous to when you normally would be going to Texas? Um, And then part two of that is, will the race strategy maybe be a little bit more conservative so that he can make it through the race and really learn a lot about the car? Yeah, I think, you know, from 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 the the expectations are obviously we we don't go there to just show up and race we want to be there be competitive um i i think in the the style of racing that texas is going to be um you know f- finishing the race on the lead lap that would that would be uh, a banner day that would be a uh a, a completely checked all the boxes job well done um, you know, for me, that would be, okay, this is a solid foundation and experience that we can roll into the speedway on. Um, you know, mile ovals are going to be a different beast when we go to Richmond. I think that's going to be an eye opener for everybody, even the experienced guys. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be what it is. Um, but for Texas, I think, that has to be a stepping stone for us when we roll into the speedway. So he has a confidence level, some experience with the balance and changes of the car. And, uh, you know, that's obviously that's the one that everything rides on. Everything matters there. I love it. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how he does. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm really excited. He's a great, not just because he's, he's my driver, but, he is a, a generally a, a good person. He's got a, a great sense of humor. You know, I think that's going to come out more and more as he comes out of his shell uh, around um, the paddock and gets, you know, more, more time to interact with the press and then interviews and stuff. But, um, you know, absolutely 110% committed. Um, no doubt about that at all. But he's just, he's a good kid. I call him the kid, I, I guess, because uh, I found out I'm actually, I think, older than his parents, which, again, <laughs> I think that dates me, <laughs> makes me feel old some days. But, uh, you know, keeping up with these guys, it's it, it keeps you young, for sure. So, obviously, we have seen several changes to the schedule <laughs> with everything that's going yeah. on. What, what are you most looking forward to now that we have – We'll call it a set schedule. Obviously, anything can change, but we kind of know what we're doing this season. Right. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm just looking forward to getting back to a racetrack. I mean, 
this this has been one of the weirdest sort of periods that, that I've experienced in, in my 20 some 20 plus years of racing. Um, we have, you know, keep keeping up with the, the I racing stuff. You know, we, we, that got more and more serious the further and further we got into it. You know, as soon as you get engineers involved, everything goes up a notch. Unfortunately, we have a tendency to do that. Um, <laughs> but you know, we, we would spend, you know, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you know, three or four hours on the computer doing practice races and practice qualifying and analyzing data. And yeah, it, it, that, that helped keep us busy as well. So, but as far as the schedule looking, I'm looking forward to one getting started, but, you know, being at, at, at the speedway, whenever it is, for whatever reason, for me is always special, you know, even going for the road course race, uh, and being there, it's, it's, it's still going to be, you know, I still get the goosebumps the first time I walk down out in pit lane. Um, you know, that, that's just, it, it means that much to anyone who's been there and, and tried to win it or has actually accomplished it and won it. The place is, you know, for me, it's, it's that special. Yeah. So I grew up in the indie area and it's, it's always been kind of home for me. Uh, I mean, it's just, there's nothing like it in the world. So just quick follow up then on that. Are you kind of looking forward to the, um, I think it's what October 3rd or October 4th, whatever it is, the, um, the second race on the GP track? Yeah. Uh, I think being there that time of year, coming back and, and, you know, for, again, for, for me, any reason to go to the speedway, it's, it's a good, it's a good day. <laughs> um, it, it's going to be, I think, particularly for, you know, going back to Alex and, and I think he's going to be competitive in that format. Uh, you know, the road courses, I think that's, that's sort of home base for him. Um, and a chance to go back there, uh, a second time. I think that's only going to, you know, hopefully build on his confidence level and, you know, again, finishing, finishing well in races and, and on podiums and, and, you know, I would actually expect that we should have a, a competitive run for some wins this year in, in if nothing else um, on the road courses, but obviously, with uh, the combination of, of Alex and Santino, I think, you know, again, cautiously optimistic. I think we are going to show up and, and actually run quite competitively in, in a lot of the places we go to. I yes, like the me optimism. Too. So, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm curious. I was doing some reading earlier this morning. Instead of having a, a you know, standard kind of technical director, you and Santino's engineer, Olivier, are kind of, I don't want to say co maybe co-leading it. How does that work in, in team dynamics? Does that mean you're also doing some work on Santino's car or, or, or set up and, and Olivier also pitching in on, on Alex's car? Yeah, it's so oh, a little background. I've, I've known uh, and worked with Olivier uh, together at, at KV Racing. Um, he was uh, EJ Vizo's engineer. Um, he has been not only that, but but just a, a really good friend. Um, you know, anybody who knows him knows he's, he's the, the crazy French guy and, and he's just such a good person. Um, it's actually a, a, a pleasure to work with him again. And that's made it in, incredibly easy um, coming in and, and sort of transitioning into an, a new work environment. So as far as, as our shared responsibility, um, we have also our assistant engineers are very high, high level. Um, my assistant, uh, uh, Ross Burnell is, is very experienced. He's been probably with the team as long as anybody there. Um, to the point where, you know, he's, he's got the background of the team's history and, and knows how all the, the internal systems function you know, having him as, as, as a resource as well is it's almost, you know, between, uh, and Olivier's assistant, uh, Mike came from NASCAR. So 
again, a, a super experienced guy, but a fresh perspective, a different point of view sometimes. Between the four of us, you know, obviously Olivier, Olivier and I kind of uh, discuss and, and set the, the direction, but those guys are just as instrumental at, at bringing this whole program up to where it is in a short amount of time. I love it. So we will wrap it up with one more here from Jess. And again, Eric, thanks for the time this afternoon, but I will turn it over to Jess for one more. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So mine is not going to be really racing related per se, (laughs) but I know you said you did the iRacing stuff um, here lately and in all of that. What else have you been doing to keep yourself busy um, during this crazy time we've been going through? Ah, uh, you know, honestly, so a little just without getting too deep into it, um, when we came back from St. Pete, um, the, you know, the whole world was changing by the hour, you know, unfortunately, um, it was kind of in that mode before we went there, uh, you know, with NBA canceling their season. Um, my, uh, my wife is actually, um, uh, diabetic she ha- actually has had some health issues in the past um so when we were sort of talking she was actually scheduled to go to St. Pete um we canceled her trip um and actually before I even got home from St. Pete she went to uh stay with my mother in the my hometown in Nebraska which is Halsey Nebraska uh population 76 uh, about two hours from anywhere. <laughs> so just to try to, you know, keep her safe. I self quarantined for two weeks here in Indy, um, which sounds, it, it, if anybody who's done that, it, it sounds great. It's okay for a couple of days, but then, wow, you know, you're, you're literally pacing the floors. Um, or at least I am, I'm, I'm not very good at, at, uh, self isolation. I can, I can tell you. But then I went and joined them in Nebraska. So we spent probably five or six weeks, you know, with my mom, um, which never happens this time of year. <laughs> um, so that that was actually sort of the silver lining to all of this. But, you know, keeping up with work, um, you know, going back to uh, Olivier, we probably talk at least three or four times a week, if not more. Um, talking about work, we're always keeping an eye on the schedule. Um, but going, trying to get back to a routine of, you know, getting some exercise. Um, you know, I was biking here when I was in Indy. Um, we would go for rounds and walks uh, in Nebraska while we, my wife is working from home as well. Um, and then really just kind of trying to uh, maintain a schedule of, you know, four or five hours of work, take a break, you know, finish up a couple of emails and then, you know, shut the computer off. Try to try to keep that balance going because, you know, it's in racing, it's easy just to go off the deep end. If you're a workaholic like I am, it just kind of just keeps going on. There's always something to do. I understand that. So I have to ask during this downtime, <laughs> have you watched the illustrious Tiger King? Yeah. Okay. And full disclosure, I watched, we, we actually watched, I think three or four episodes and I, I just, it wasn't for me. <laughs> I, get it. I actually re I, I actually rewatched both seasons of, uh, of, uh, the Netflix formula one documentary. Good idea. Uh, I'm, I'm the name of it's, escaping me right now uh dr- drive to survive i think drive to survive yeah yeah i enjoyed rewatching all of that twice <laughs> yeah. that, that kind of, much better use of your yeah that, that kind of tells you where i guess my head's at no that, that i did give it a, i did give it a fair shot though yeah no i i don't blame you it's not like i watched all seven episodes of tiger king in a day and a half but I would have been smarter to not do that. <laughs> so that's again, not, nothing against it. I can see where the draw is. I can see it's it's kind of like slowing down when you drive by an accident. 
you know, it's on the freeway. <laughs> it's like, is this actually happening? And yes, it is actually happening. And you're just like, wow, okay, <laughs> that that really actually that this is this is actually happening. This is how some people, this is their world. <laughs> some may may look from the outside in like a fishbowl at our world and go, what are these people doing? Why why would you? Why would you want to do that? Get a real job. Did you know there is actually, and I have, I have not listened to it, but there is a Tiger King Joe Exotic podcast now. I don't know what it's yeah. about, but wow, yes, that is that is what quarantine is coming to now. <laughs> well, didn't he do like a, a TV, uh, some sort of local broadcast? TV channel thing. I'm sure those are probably on YouTube all over somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. I, I, I honestly haven't paid too close attention to the whole Tiger King thing since we finished watching it here, like the first weekend of quarantine, but I will <laughs> have to investigate that very soon. I'm now I'm intrigued. I don't know, you know, probably cause I don't have anything to do the rest of the afternoon, but now I'm <laughs> down a Tiger King YouTube rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to do. These I am so glad I'm going to work. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and I got to give props to the the our uh, internet system throughout the world because I've got uh, at one point we had myself obviously in Nebraska. I had uh, my assistant Ross in Chicago or Boston. He was back and forth, and Alex in Spain. And here we are like actually sort of operating as a race team you know how how that really worked i i'm i'm still amazed by it yeah it's it's definitely helpful with staying in contact you know with with jess and and matt our other co-hosts and doing all these interviews on our computer instead of at the racetrack and uh it's been a lot of uh, a lot of fun coming up with new ways to to reach out to all the fans and uh talk with guys like you yeah, it's definitely been a learning experience. I'm I'm not sure we'll uh, we'll see the same sort of work work environment or work situations on the other side of this. I think everybody's learning right now. There's sometimes there's easier and better ways to do things. Yeah, welcome. I I've worked from home for a couple of years now, so that part isn't new to me. But not being able to go escape to a racetrack on a weekend or escape during the day to go anywhere is definitely a a learning experience. But I am happy that. You know, for the most part, everybody in my family is help, healthy, and I think yeah, my family is healthy. I can't remember now that I said that, but Jess, hopefully I was right. Yes, everybody is currently good. back to healthy. So, oh, good, good. Yeah, same here, and, and really it's, for us, we, we have to do that so we can go back to racing, you know, and, and that, regardless of, of anything else, what... <laughs> Olivia and I were joking about it. You know, we've, we're working with HBD. We're working with IndyCar, you know, making plans to get the guys back to work. And, you know, I, I told Olivia, I said, look, if they tell me to put a rubber glove on my head and walk like a chicken, if that gets me back to the racetrack, I'm all in. <laughs> yeah, trust me, it's same here. I'll, I'll wear uh, two masks and goggles if I need to. Yep, whatever it takes. So on that note, Eric, yeah, I, I completely agree. I can't wait to be at the track soon enough. But Eric, I, I do appreciate the time this afternoon. It's been a lot of fun. Guys, we are going to put Eric as the official Tiger King spokesman. Um, <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll make Tiger King the episode, the, the cover art for the episode. Some, I'll, I'll get some Photoshop skills going here over the weekend. But... Uh, Eric. that's awesome now you're gonna draw me back in <laughs> <laughs> see that's what i'm here for Hel helping you make bad netflix decisions during quarantine i was gonna say it is friday afternoon right exactly i don't know what exactly don't know what time happy hour is around your guys's place but uh it's kind of loose around here yeah i think it starts <laughs> right about now yeah yeah I'm the same <laughs> Well, it's been fun. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you out at the track this year when we're all able to to get there, hopefully sooner rather than later. So stay safe and good luck this year. Yeah, thank you, guys. It really was a, a, a pleasure to talk to you. Um, and I'll reach out anytime if you need anything at all. Always happy to help. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. All right.
Thank, Thank you. you guys. Take care. Have a good weekend.